Hello and welcome back to Dumb Thumbs FPV. So today's video is exactly how it's titled. It's about the Tyro 89 by Eosheen. This was sent to me by Banggood. And there is an affiliated link down below if you'd like to support the channel. If you're interested in the product, just click on that link and it does support my channel. Um, there's also going to be an index down below. And the reason why is they sent this to me, not just for a review, but also a build video. So this is going to be an extremely comprehensive build video, guys. It's going to go, it's made for beginners. So if you built quadcopters before, that index I'm going to put down below, you can just skip over the stuff you're not interested in and get to the stuff you are interested in. And also, if you're building it, like you've never built a quadcopter before, and you stop one night, you can pick up on the video the next day and finish up the quadcopter. It shouldn't take you too long, okay? I'm going to try to make this as easy to understand as possible. And this is a very, very simple kit. That's what I love about these kits is everything's included except for the receiver. And I highly recommend the XM receiver by FR Sky if you have an FR Sky radio. But $89, you're not paying for someone else to put this together for you. You're putting it together. And that way you know how to do it. You know the quadcopter. If you crash or something breaks, you know how to take it apart. You know how to fix it. And that's what's important. 50% of this hobby to me is building quadcopters. I love building quadcopters and I've been doing it for years. But the problem with building a quadcopter yourself is that sometimes you forget to order certain things, like things that you you may need to complete the build. I do it all the time. In fact, I got one on the on the bench right now. I'm waiting for parts because I, oops, I forgot. So now I'm having to pay for the part and extra shipping where if I would have just thrown it in the basket in the first place, I could have saved myself 10, 15 bucks in shipping. And that's what's nice about this. Everything's included. Everything. So I love these little kits. And then when you're done, you end up with a really good little quadcopter. Plus it's a 2 to 4S. Um, so there's a lot of power. <laughs> if you want to fly it on 4S, I don't know. I'm going to fly it on 2S, 3S because 4S to me is a, is a lot for something this small. Might be over revving the props a little bit. So let's break this thing down on the bench. It is going to be comprehensive, guys, from breaking down the parts, showing the text and specs, building the thing, also hooking it up to beta flight, also binding your receiver. So let's get on the bench and let's, let me show you this thing. It's really, really cool. So let's go over this stuff. Um, so here's your little motors. And these little motors, I don't, I think there's only like two or maybe, I think there might be three or four manufacturers in China of motors. And they just rebrand them everywhere else. I know, I know Emacs builds a lot of motors for other people. Um, these are 1204, 6,000 KVs. And the reason they have a low KV is because it is 2S to 4S. Okay, but I'm sure they're a powerhouse. Okay, these are the bigger brothers to the Tyro 69. As you can see the size difference here. Okay, and this thing's a rocket ship. So that, you notice they're plug and play. You don't have to solder them. You just plug them right into the ES. Boom, right there you go. Okay. The ESC is a 4-in-1. It's 20 amp continuous, 23 amp burst, like I said before. On 3S, they don't list the 4S because I don't know who's going to be crazy enough to hook a 4S to this thing. But, hey, God bless you. Um, you'll notice there's no conformal coating. For those of you who don't know, the conformal coating is this stuff right here. It actually sheds water. So it naturally repels water. And it's wintertime right now. Plus, you got spring and so on and so forth. So it's always best to coat this. And this bottle right here is enough to last a 20-year-old a lifetime on building quadcopters. Me being 50, I could pass it down to my children. I'm sure they'll be greatly appreciative. Um, but, you know, be, make sure you have everything soldered on your battery leads and stuff before you go putting on your conformal coating, okay? So that's what you want to do. I'm going to coat the top and the back. And here's what it looks like for those of you who don't know what conformal coating looks like. I coat everything. So, okay, here's my bite frost. This is the bite frost uh, transmitter here, and you can notice how shiny it is. That's the conformal coating. Okay, I've coated the complete bottom of this. And I've actually taken this little shielding off and coated inside here. And then here's the HDLRC VTX as well. This is the F7. And you can notice how it's shiny. Okay, that's because it's got a coating. I didn't coat the top yet because obviously I need to solder. Okay, there's already coating that comes from the factory as you can see. But when I'm done, I completely coat it again. Just keep your conformal coating away from any boot buttons because you'll glue them shut, and your USB, okay? So stay away from these two things, all right? Um, but I'm going to conformal coat the ESCs. So I'm going to also conformal coat this after I'm done soldering. As you can see, there's quite a bit to solder here, but with these kits, everything's plug and play. So you have your little cable from your ESCs to your FC right here. 
you have, uh, you know, your, oh, and I'm going to talk about this thing too. This is the right VTX. Thank you so much. This is the same exact VTX that came with the Tyro 69. I'm telling you, there's no way this is 25 milliwatts. It performs like a 200. So thank you very much. But as you can see, it's plug and play as well. Um, the camera, the camera is a nice one too. This is a, the Turbo EOS V2 from Cadex. And this came with, uh, also came, I think this is the same one that is in the trash can. Um, I have actually a couple of these. And they're actually good performers. They're not bad little cameras for what they are. It does have a 3 millimeter frame. And I got to tell you, this thing is stiff as hell. Oh, I just popped my shoulder. So, I mean, I got 3X hands. This is tough. This is this is a 3K carbon. So it's going to be very, very durable. And it is just, it, basically the outline of it is the bigger brother to the Tyro 69. And then you have the full hood here. Now, this thing is not cheap plastic. This is, look at this thing. Look, look at this thing. <laughs> this thing is going to take a beating. I can't believe, I don't know what it's made out of. But the camera is adjustable in this. So you can adjust the camera up and down. I thought that was really cool. Now, the one thing it doesn't come with is an RX. So, because they don't know what you're flying. And so when you order the kit, make sure if you don't have an RX, get one for your particular radio. I would, If you're flying FR Sky, I would highly recommend the XM Plus. These are great. I use them in my full-size quads and all my quads. I love them. So I would highly recommend it. They're like 12 bucks or something like that. And it comes with a cable too. So you, this is for your RX. So you plug this into your FC and you are going to have to solder three different points right here. I'm going to put a recommended soldering iron down below for those of you who don't own one, okay? So you can just solder it right there and plug it right into your FC. So they, you know, pretty much everything's plug and play. You have so far one, two, three, four, five points that need to be soldered. And that's it. And then this is, of course, your capacitor. This goes across your battery leads right here, like this. And what the what the capacitor does is to help discharge um, when you plug in your battery. That's pretty much what it is. So when you plug in and out of your battery, it doesn't overload the system and cause problems. So what I've done here is I've separated out all of the screws, nuts, bolts, every single thing it takes. And there's going to be some leftover stuff here, which is good. It's better to have too much than not enough, right? So you have four four plastic standoffs. The, the plastic standoffs go between the frame plate here and your ESC. So you have a space between the bottom of the ESC to the top of the plate here for your battery strap to go through these two holes here. Okay? So that's what those are for. Those are mounted to the frame using these four longer screws here. So you have these little pan head screws, or I'm yeah, they're pan head screws, so like that, they're rounded, okay. That's what those four are for. So they go between the frame and the standoffs, okay. So there's four of those. You also have these here. These are these are like a socket head screw, okay. They're more square. And what those are for? You got eight of those. Those are for the props. So you, you can see you feed them through the props and then you screw them down to the motor bell. That's the whole idea. And it, Honestly, guys, I would use Loctite or a lock, you know, a thread locker on that stuff. Okay. You have five smaller screws here. Okay. These are the smallest screws in the batch. What those are for is you'll have a couple of extra. And here's how you mount your camera. Okay. And you have two positions to mount your camera. You got a rear position and a front position. Okay. Now, I believe that the rear position is so people who want to run more of an aggressive angle on their camera, like a 40-45, you can move your camera back, and that way it's a little bit more protected in here, okay? The, ca the camera lens isn't sticking out past the canopy. However, if you're a new person, you're going to be wanting to more on the front, and the reason why is because otherwise you'll end up, if you go to the back position and you're at a shallower angle, let's say 10 to 20 degrees, because this is a 2.1 millimeter lens, um you're going to get some of the canopy in your P FPV view. So that's, and how they're mounted, the screws that I use are the motor screws because there's plenty of motor screws here, okay? Those are the longest ones to put in there. You don't want to use the short, short ones. You don't want to use one of the four longer ones. That's why I separated everything out here. So that's how that works. Um, 
Now the FC. So the FC mounts inside of the canopy. So what you want to do is make sure you have your camera plugged in, your VTX plugged in, and have your RX cable plugged in as well. Okay. And you're going to mount this in here. Well, now if you notice on the FC, it has a it has an arrow. All FCs have arrows. But you can see this one's at an angle. It's pointing at an angle as opposed to straight forward like a normal like a, like a normal FC would have, okay? For example, the HDLRC here has, right here, this is the arrow right here pointing this way. This is, a, this is more of an angle. So why is that? Because it fits inside here at an angle. So it fits upside down, okay? And how you know you got it right is there's a cutout for the USB connector on the canopy right here. So you can... So you can connect your, you know, your FC to your beta flight to your computer. So that's how that works. So everything gets plugged in. Three of the smallest screws go here, here, and here. Okay. And then you should only have one cable hanging out. Well, you'll have maybe two, you'll have two cables hanging out. One is the RX cable, and the other is the bus cable that goes between the FC and the ESCs. Okay. So it's all one unit. So when you put this on there, you just plug it into your FCs. That's what that's for, okay? Um, and then your your receiver. So how they mounted, how they want you to mount the receiver is back here, or the VTX. So you probably have to mount it upside down, or maybe you can feed it through. No, I think you're gonna have to mount it upside down like this. I really do. That's what that little shelf is for back there on the canopy. See? So you just have to double side sticky tape it down is the only way I can I can see where you're gonna do it. There's a little space here and here that you might be able to use um, maybe a zip tie. But you know honestly what I would do on this guys is once you know I would actually put a little bit of shrink tubing. That's what I'm gonna do on this. I'll show you how I'm gonna mount that a little bit later. Um, the longer screws. So you got five longer screws. So you have a couple of extra. What the longer screws are for is they feed through the side of the, the main frame plate like this. And then you have these rubber tubes. And the whole idea of that is so that the FC, which is mounted inside your canopy, plus the camera, is now more soft mounted to the frame. Okay, you got a little bit of sponginess there. That's just to kind of hopefully get rid of a little bit of the vibrations from the motors, or if you have a bent prop, and that's what that's all about. Okay, guys, this is a crucial step. As you can see, there's three pads there on the end towards the plug. One says S bus. There's a metal pad and a PPM pad. In order to use SBUS or PPM, you have to create a solder bridge between the middle pad and the one you, you want to choose. So in this case, it's SBUS. So as you can see, I created a bridge of solder between the middle pad and the SBUS pad. Be really careful on the temperature of your soldering iron. Keep it down around 340 degrees Celsius and also only use the two second rule. These pads are extraordinarily small, as you can see, and you can actually lift the pad up off of the board if you use too much heat, which means the pad does no longer makes contact to the tracer that the pad belongs to, and effectively ruining your um, chances of S-Bus on this board. These boards are like $23, okay? So just be use the two-second rule, and keep it down around 340 degrees Celsius when you're doing this, okay? No higher than that, all right? As you can see, I got the ESCs done, and I also conformal coded them. So the white stripe, once again, goes towards negative on the, on the um, capacitor. Use ample amount of um, solder on that connection there. I also conformal coded everything, including the back of the the back of the plugs right here without flooding them. I don't want to flood them where I can't plug anything in, but all of these pads here for the motors and also put conformal coating over the top of the soldering joints because there's snow outside. If you flip it upside down, you'll notice in the frame when you get this, there's some notches here on this little post here. It looks like a T. That's for this right here, your zip tie, because you want to be able to zip tie down your leads, okay? Don't just let them hang off the pads. If you get in a crash and you eject your battery and it pulls on these pads, it can pull them right off the board. All right? 
So I want to talk about two things right now. I want to talk about the receiver and the buzzer, okay? So the buzzer pad is right here. I don't know if you can see it or not. Um, I'm hoping you can. Here, let me see if I can lift it up a little bit more. Focus. Okay. Those, that's your buzzer pad, just like that. The, the positive has a clear pad. The negative actually shares a pad with an IC. So that's where it is, okay? And the receiver. So the receiver, there seems to be enough room between the ESC and the FC to sandwich the receiver between the two, okay, when it's all put together. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to conformal coat it, conformal coat the FC because I'm done with it. I don't need, just stay away from the boot button, stay away from the USB when you're doing conformal coating. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead on the receiver and I'm going to shrink wrap it. So shrink tube it so that I know that there's no continuity happening between the receiver and the FC and the ESCs. Um, as far as binding procedure, I don't know what kind of radio you're going to end up with. If you have a jumper, I don't know anything about the jumpers. Um, this is what I have right here, the XR Lite. And you basically, you just go in, you select a model. Okay, you hit the center, you hit the center joystick, you select the model, and then you um, go to your right on your joystick, and then you can go through the settings on that. The first page, scroll down to where it has the settings for your, to set up your receiver. You select D16, that's what I did on this one, is D16, 1 through 8 on telemetry. And then I, I go down and I get the bind, and I hit that until it start, the radio starts beeping. And then you hold down the boot button, and you plug your battery in at the same time. I know it's kind of, you kind of got to get it on a flat surface like this so you can push it down with your fingernail and then you just kind of squeeze it together and try to make sure it's connected, the battery and the, you know, the battery connector. And then once you get a green light or once it starts, yeah, once it gets the green light, then you can unplug the battery, shut, you know, turn off the bind, shut down the radio. And when you turn it back on, you should get nothing but a green light. It's kind of finicky, guys. So just to let you know, if you've never done it before, it, it really is finicky. Um, there is another way on some of these that, you know, that's worked for me, and that is you fire it up, you put it in bind mode on your radio, you know, where it's beeping. And then once you fire it up, you plug in your battery, you can push the boot button at that point because you, you have a red flashing. And then sometimes it'll go to the green, green and red, and let you know, hey, okay, I'm done here. Like it'll flash green twice, and then you can unplug the battery. So that's another way that could it could be too. It depends on the firmware on this. This is the top being completed. As you can see, I have the little zip ties coming out here. What are these for? That's for the radiated end of the receiver, okay? The silver part here. And that's what that's for. So the whole idea is you got to have the radiated ends at a 90 degree angle. That's That gives you the maximum um, range for your receiving antenna. And then you can see here with the VTX, I just put it on a shelf and double-sided sticky taped. And how I put the um, zip ties in here, sorry about the shakes, guys, it's getting late. I've already had like six cups of coffee. Is I put them inside here and then I roll them around, and that way the bulky part's not on the outside here. Okay, so it can't roll around on its own and get in the props. They just naturally want to stand up. And I'll, I'll, shrink, I'll shrink tube these a couple of times. Um, everything's conformal coated, including the back of the camera. And then I shrink wrapped... Uh, the receiver here. So I'm ready to mount this whole thing together, get the motors on, get them plugged in, and I'll hook it up to beta flight and I'll be back with that. Okay guys, so here's the build when it's all said and done. Um, so yeah, I liked how it turned out. I think it turned out pretty good. I liked how I secured this with a little bit on top of the beeper and how the beeper just shot out and kind of finished the back of the canopy up a little bit here. Um, so it's secure with a little bit of hot glue there. Um, I put the props on. Now, this is, I just put the props on just to make sure everything fit, wasn't going to hit anything, like the VTX antenna. It can't really be pushed down into the props. I like that. So I just wanted to make sure, but I'm going to be taking the props off before I hook it up to beta flight, of course, because I got to test the rotation of the motors. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I like how it turned out. I think it turned out pretty damn well. Um, when you do do the when you do put the props on final, you want to just put the screws through the props, and then I use a little bit of thread locker, just a little bit, after I push the screws through on the bottom there, and 
then I secure it to the motor itself. You don't want to put too much on it. You don't want it all over your motor and stuff and possibly lock and getting inside of a bearing and locking it up. Also too, I use Umagod grip here. So for the battery and I love this stuff. You might have to double it up a little bit because you know, you do have a screw right here and I don't like screws in the middle of my, um, my batteries cause it can ruin the bag and could cause problems. So, but I mean, I love this stuff cause you don't even need the battery strap. You just, it just sticks on there. He actually tested this with a 4S battery without even a battery strap and it stuck right to it. So you can see. So I love this stuff. It keeps the battery from shooting forward or back and disconnecting and you, you losing your quad. So it's just, it's really nice. It's only $4 in some sense. I think Banggood's got some stuff too. I'll see if I can find it on Banggood, but I like, I like supporting Tommy. Tommy's a good guy. So that's it. So I'm going to go and I'm going to hook it up to Betaflight, take the props off, hook it up to Betaflight, check for rotation, set up Betaflight. I'm going to show you that. And then I'm going to come back. I'm going to put the props on for final. Um, and do a test down here in the basement and then go out and do a flight video. Okay, guys, so we're back here with Beta Flight. I just wanted to show this for new people and to uh, complete this build. Okay, so we're going to connect it. Make sure you have a full battery. Make sure you have your radio turned on and then connect. So we're going to go to ports. Ports are good. We're going to go configuration. I always have motor stop turned on. Um, because for safety reasons, I learned the hard way having something going off in my hands. It's already set up for S bus and it's already set up for the right receiver for, um, FR sky. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, power and battery. Now power and battery was not, um, doing the voltage correctly. So I turned it up to 114. Maybe I'll turn it down to 113 here. But I think that's about right. About 8.1 now. While, it, while it's running um minimum cell voltage i turned it down to three and the cell warning to 3.5 okay pid tuning so this has a beta flight 3.55 on it which is fine i guess i'm just going to leave the pids alone for right now and to see how it flies on 2s 3s if i get any type of um sometimes when you run 3s on stock settings on these smaller copters you get um all kinds of oscillations so i might change it out there and, and hopefully i can just do it on the radio um so here's my rates here i got really high rates because i have gimped up thumbs that's why the channel is called dumb thumbs fpv okay so let's go to the receiver tab make sure that's working correctly okay throttle okay and we're turning the right direction going down going up that way that way everything works good okay so we're gonna check my buttons okay and that's my beeper button okay so everything's good there we're going to go to modes now this is the modes that i have okay and so the reason i have angle and horizon is because anytime i'm doing a review and it's just kind of another safety issue if if i lose if i think the vtx you know like if i think it's better than it actually is and i lose I don't want to lose, you know, something I'm reviewing. So that's why I have the different modes. So if I lose it, I can go back into angle mode and then just shut the thing off. So that way I at least it leveled itself out. It's not going to pile drive straight into the ground. Okay. And lose my battery, lose connection on the battery. So you can see here it goes to horizon and then it just goes to full air mode with, um, with no assist whatsoever. Okay. Arm button. Okay. And then beeper. Okay, if you just, if you chose to get the beeper, so that's working. OSD, of course, is however you want to set it up. I always have the cell voltage, the pack voltage, milliamps. I put the crosshairs up here. Like I said, once again, is when I'm first testing out something, I have crosshairs, and the reason why is because when you take off, sometimes, um, you know, if things aren't set up correctly and stuff like your camera then you know i can see if the camera's a little off and stuff so that's why i do that so let's check out the motor rotation okay so what we're going to do and you got to be careful of where the usb plugs into the canopy because it could rub on one of the motors and you don't want to burn up an esc right away so let's test number one okay number one is going the wrong direction so that needs to be reversed number two Okay, number two is also going the wrong direction. Make sure you have the props off. I forgot to say that. Okay, number three. Number three is going the right direction. 
and number four. Uh, it's going the right direction. So one and two need to be reversed. Okay, so let's shut this down. We're going to open up BL Heli on my particular computer. It's BL Heli uh, 64. Let's see here. Where is it at? I just put it down here. I think it's right here. Okay. So let's connect to it. Let's read the setup. Okay. All right. So we want one and two. So we're going to turn these off here. And we're going to go to motor. Okay. We're going to reverse it. And then we're going to write the setup. Okay. And we're going to go to two, turn one off. We're going to reverse that. Okay. We're going to write the setup. There we go with that. And then uh, we're going to check the motor rotation now. Okay. Once again, props are off. So let's test out one here. Oh, sorry. There we go. One. Okay. Might have to turn it up a little bit more than this to get some grip here. Okay, that looks like it's going in the right direction. Motor 2 is now going the right direction. Okay, so we're done with this. So we are done. All right, so let's connect again and let's just make sure through Betaflight it is working like it intended. Motor one, now go in the right direction. Motor two is now going in the right direction. Motor three, which is by the USB cable, so hold up the USB cable so you're not dragging on the motor. Definitely go in the right direction. These are pretty smooth motors. All right, right direction. So now we got everything set, guys. All right, so I'm going to put the props on, and then I'm going to go for a test flight here in the basement. And then I'm going to go for a flight video, and I'll share that with you. You can see I'm trying to fly in 21 mile an hour winds and 37 mile an hour gusts. You know, there's it, the weather's been horrible here. I mean, it just doesn't stop blowing. You know, it, today it did, and that's why I held off the review for another day, just so I can get some decent flight footage with no wind. But... It actually flew a 75 grams plus what is the battery 20 some grams so a hundred grams actually flew in this kind of I mean it wasn't pretty and it wasn't easy but it actually flew in this I couldn't believe it I, I thought there's no way I was laughing when I was when I was taking it out I was thinking because I could I was having a hard time standing against the building because it's blowing against the building and I'm like wow okay I mean, it's not pretty. It is buffering all over the place because it's having a hell of a time. But I just, honestly, I couldn't believe it. I opened the door because I was trying to keep the wind off of me as I'm trying to fly because it kept trying to shove me into the door. And you can see here, I mean, it's just the wind has gotten so bad. <laughs> it's just, you can't even hardly fly in this. It's crazy. Look at that. I'm trying to hover. Look at this thing. It's at like a 30-degree angle. I'm trying to hover it. It's insane, but it did it, you know, I mean, I, I don't know, a couple of years ago, we couldn't be able to do that with a three inch or a four inch quadcopter, so it's pretty amazing. So what I decided to do just to kind of show beginners and stuff, this is on 2S, just, just to show how docile this thing, this thing is on 2S. And I don't have any, any, you know, my throttles full, th it's the same as I was flying outside. There's, I didn't have a, um, I didn't turn down the throttle or anything like that. It flies like a whoop. You know, um, just, yeah. I mean, there's still wind coming through the door, of course, but, and it kind of makes it uh, wobble a little bit here and there. But overall, I mean, it's just really, really docile. And as, you know, I just, I like that. Now, the props that it, it comes with, they're not exactly the most durable props in the world. Um, I did break one, or actually broke two today hitting some branches, and I was kind of surprised that they broke, but it, today it is actually, uh, I was flying in 26 degree weather, so it's 26 degree Fahrenheit, so I think the plastic just got really brittle. Um, but overall, I think the I think the props are okay. I just think that, you know, maybe we can find some better props for it. 
Um, I mean, it flies good and everything else, but, you know, I was just kind of surprised that they just didn't bend as, as opposed to break. But, you know, like I said, it's it's 26 degrees, and, and I did hit the tree pretty good, so whatever. But you can see here, I mean, I'm just bebopping around inside there, just like if I was to do a whoop or, or a much smaller little craft. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's really surprising. Now, 3S, though, if, you, if you're not a beginner, definitely 3S. And I kind of wish I would have tried out 4S. I kind of wish I would have taken two of my 2S packs and just tied them together because... Right here, there's no wind today. It's actually a really nice day. It's just I got out there a little late, so the sun's in my eyes a lot. You can see it just power loops. Um, really nice. I mean, very, very predict predictable. This is on 2S again. And, you know, it, it gets going on 2S pretty good. It covers quite a bit of land for what it is. Um, but, yeah, it's just it's really, really predictable. Very, um, how do I want to put this? It's very soft. It's like um, gooey. That's that's a good word for it. It's very gooey. And what I was also surprised too is is a lot of these things is a lot of these ones that are small like the toothpicks and the twigs. When you go to do a power loop and you cut the throttle, they tend to just drop like a rock. But this one here, you can fling about, so it's it flies more like a much larger uh, quadcopter. It doesn't fly like a a twig or a toothpick. So, and I wasn't expecting that. So when I was power looping this jet, you know, I was doing the same thing as before. I just gun it right here. And then I ended up on the other side of that fence. I was like, what, what's going on here? And I realized I didn't have to, I didn't have to gun it like that. I could just go up, just feed a little bit of throttle and then back around. And it was just really smooth. It's much smoother on 3S though. I got to tell you that. I mean, 2S is all right, but 3S is very, very smooth. So once again, I'd recommend a 553S or a 453S um, because it, it does it does track a lot better. It's got a lot more grip when it turns. Um, it's just it floats a lot better. I don't know if it's just the extra weight um, of a 3S or whatever or not, but it just floats so nice. And here I'm about to show you. I mean, this is this is how it power loops on 3S. Just up, really nice and smooth, and then back through. You got plenty of power for recovery. It doesn't, you don't have to sit there and gun it. Um, it's just, it's just so smooth. So 3S is definitely the way to go on this if, if you're an intermediate pilot. If you want it to go slow it down a little bit and you don't want to do like a throttle profile, like a rate profile or something like that, then, then I'd say, you know, um, 2S. But I mean, it's just so damn smooth. I mean, I just blipped it right there, almost went on the other side of the fence again. You know, so 3S is definitely the way to go. So on this one coming up, I, I wanted I wanted to show you the VTX. So let me explain that. Um, the VTX on here says it's 25 milliwatts, but I don't think so. And the reason I say that is because we live in a, a town with an Air Force and an international airport, and I don't know how many nukes are around us. Plus, the city has a wireless Wi-Fi. I mean... Bottom line is, guys, is that our city has so much noise, so, such a huge noise floor, that they literally had to put up extra cell phone towers in town just so that we could have, you know, 4G. And our cell phones still don't work right here. And so when I'm out in this park, like with my 200s, it looks just exactly the same. So I, I doubt this is a 25 milliwatt transmitter. There's no way. So I just wanted to show that. Anyway, guys, if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up. If you like what I do here, um, please subscribe. And like I said, there's an affiliated link down below that helps my channel out. I like this product. I think it's good. It's a good little flyer. It's tough as nails.